We're going to pick up where we left off in the last lesson here, where we are going to allow the user to hit this add diary entry button and then display a form for creating their diary entry. Now, in this lesson, we're not actually introducing any concepts that you haven't already learned. So what I encourage you to do is try to build this functionality in your app without using this video as guidance first. And if you get stuck, then come back and follow along with me as we build it here together. So first things first is that when this diary entry button is clicked, we no longer wanna do this action, which we just had temporarily in the last lesson, we actually want to navigate the user to some kind of view where they can create a diary entry. And we already have in our application a view for creating a trip. And so perhaps we can just reuse this view for creating a diary entry. So all I'm gonna do here is on trip create and edit, I'm gonna click these three dots and hit duplicate. And this can be our diary entry, create and edit. And we're actually gonna do things a little differently here where when we're adding the diary entry, the button to create is actually gonna be here in the top and not a floating button down the bottom. Just to show you a different way of doing things. So I'm going to delete the floating group with the button in it that we copied across. I'm also just going to delete all of the fields that we don't need. So I'm gonna delete cost and the end date field. The title field can stay, the summary field can stay. And for now, let's just clear out this initial content so we can just focus on what we need to do to create this diary entry. And again, in the title, let's just clear this out. And just for now, just have this say, create entry. I've got here a trailing button, which is set up to go to the previous mobile view. And that's fine, except I actually want it over on the left-hand side here. So I'm actually gonna create a leading button, which is identical. and have a workflow on this one to go to the previous mobile view. And instead, this trailing button is actually gonna become our create button. So I'm gonna change the color of it accordingly and maybe even just bump up the font weight slightly. And if we edit the workflow for this one, we can actually remove this go to previous mobile view action that we copied across and instead add the action for creating our new diary entry. So we're gonna create a new diary entry. And we're gonna set here the content field to that multi-line input, which is currently labeled as summary. We could probably rename it here as content. We're gonna set the date field to that date time picker, which is currently saying date time picker start date. That's fine, we can leave that label. And then we also have a title input, but we haven't created a field on the diary entry yet to hold a title. So as a little shortcut, I can just hit create a new field and we'll just call this the title field, which is gonna be of type text and we can point this to be the value in that input title. So what we need to do is make sure that whenever we're displaying this create diary entry form, we pass a trip into it so that this create action can make use of that trip data source and store it here on the diary entry, All right? So we need something to point this to. And luckily for us, because we copied this from a view that already had a trip property, we have a trip property that we can use. So we can just simply point this to the property that lives inside of the view. And then what we should probably do is go to the previous mobile view as well. Now we need to add the logic to actually display this form in the appropriate part of our application. 
And that of course is on this button that we already set up on our trip details view. So inside of this workflow where we had started to set up the navigation action, let's set the target view here to be this new view that we just created. And we'll actually set this up as a modal for now as well and make sure that we're passing in here as the trip the trip that's already living inside of this trip details view. So if we go and test this out now, I'm gonna hit create diary entry. That's going to display the form. So I could say here, a test entry, some test summary and hit create. And we're not displaying those new values anywhere here on the interface. So what I can do to make sure that this worked is head over to the app data tab and see that indeed the content date and entry fields have been set accordingly. I think one thing that we possibly need to change here for the initial content is change this initial content for the start date or the date of the diary entry just to be the current date time that feels like it's going to be more useful from the perspective of the user experience right the user's going to add a diary entry for today potentially but they can of course change this with the date picker and then another little ux tweak that we can make here is is notice that when we add a diary entry here within our reference application that this top title input is focused right away and the keyboard becomes visible. Whereas in our application, the user can open the form, but then they have to separately click into the title input. So we can save them a step here by auto-focusing this title input whenever this form, this view is displayed. And we can do that within the workflow tab by simply adding an event trigger called page is loaded that this should probably be called view is loaded since it's not a page, but a view in the context of mobile that we're using. And then we just add here a handy little action called set focus to an input element. And we choose here what input that we want to be focused, meaning the input that we want the user to be able to start typing in as soon as the view is displayed. And this then results in this behavior here, which is lovely. Last thing that we wanna do is just change the appearance of each of these diary entry rows to display the title and the date formatted nicely. So back on our trip details view, I'm gonna change this to be the current diary entries title field. And I'm going to duplicate it here. Note that the vertical list item here is defaulting to the row layout. So I'm gonna change this to be a column I will have to make some slight adjustments to the text elements within, namely make sure that they both have fit height to content toggled on. And so that I can see how these appear right within the canvas, I'm just gonna add some content for each. And this can allow me to just adjust the style of the slightly, like I might wanna start with this body 16 for the first one, but perhaps the body 14 with a gray font color, just to de-emphasize it a bit and have this kind of look, which I think looks relatively tidy. And then of course we should set the data source dynamically for this date field to be the date value and then format it as something that we like to have in our application. And if I take a look at how this works on a new trip here, you see that it's appearing as follows. That looks relatively nice. Add another one here, maybe Another one just so that we can really test out how this looks. And I think out of the box here, the styling is quite nice. Notice we actually have this here line divider going all the way across. 
that's just the way that this vertical list element was placed by default. The only thing I might wanna do is just replace the color with one of my color variables, maybe one that's in a similar place on the color picker, just so that if I ever decide I wanna change the colors throughout my entire application, I know that I can just do that within the styles tab. Okay, and so this is the result so far. Now in the next lesson, we're gonna set up some more nested views here, namely the ability for us to view a diary entry by clicking on it, and also for us to be able to edit an existing diary entry. So, see you in the next lesson.